with NASA's Space Launch System and Orion spacecraft facing an uncertain future. The question arises, is there another way to get to the moon? SpaceX's Starship HLS can be a good answer, but honestly, it's also not ready yet. So what if we turn to SpaceX's Crew Dragon, launched on Falcon Heavy? It sounds like a bold, outside-the-box idea, but it is more realistic than you know. Find out everything in today's episode. Anyway, our next goal is 100,000, and we need your support to get there. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. We appreciate your help. Thank you. Rumors regarding the potential cancellation of NASA's Space Launch System, SLS, have intensified, particularly following statements from Eric Berger, a senior space editor at Ars Technica. In November 2024, Berger indicated that there was at least a 50% chance that the SLS would be entirely canceled, a sentiment that escalated to a 75% likelihood just a month later. This speculation aligns with broader discussions within the Trump administration about revising NASA's architecture, which may include scrapping key components like the SLS and the Orion spacecraft. Of course, like the Constellation program, dismantling this giant orange rocket won't be easy. Most notably, Boeing, the primary contractor for the SLS, has reportedly informed its employees about potential layoffs linked to the uncertain future of the SLS program, acting without prior notification to NASA. This move appears to be a strategy to pressure lawmakers to intervene and save the SLS before any official decisions are made by the White House. NASA further backed up this when, in February 2025, it maintained that SLS was critical to its Artemis Lunar Exploration Initiative, despite Boeing's workforce cuts. However, convincing Trump's administration and the head of Doge, Elon Musk, to stick with the pricey SLS program is like trying to sell a $2 billion hot dog. No toppings, no bun, and you still have to pay extra for the ketchup, aka the payloads and ground systems. Clearly, without you, a club is still a club. In the event of SLS cancellation, there are still other ways to get to the moon. For example, we would be utilizing SpaceX's Crew Dragon for lunar missions. You know, Crew Dragon has a dry mass of fewer than 10 tons and 50% more internal space than the Apollo capsule that carried three astronauts to the moon. So, it could be the ideal option. SpaceX's Falcon Heavy rocket would launch Crew Dragon into lunar orbit where the spacecraft would dock with a lunar lander that would carry the crew to the surface, while the Crew Dragon capsule remains in low lunar orbit. After conducting their scientific activities, the crew would return to the lander, which would then dock back with Crew Dragon for the return journey to Earth. SpaceX's Dragon spacecraft launched atop Falcon 9 rockets, has demonstrated proficiency in docking procedures, particularly with the ISS. For instance, in May 2024, a Dragon Crew spacecraft was relocated to a different docking port on the ISS to accommodate the arrival of Boeing's Starliner spacecraft. Alternatively, we can launch a Dragon spacecraft and a propulsion module separately on Falcon 9 rockets, followed by docking in orbit for a lunar mission. The concept of docking two vehicles in orbit is rooted in NASA's Gemini program established 50 years ago, before continuing their journey to the moon. During the Gemini program in the 1960s, NASA developed and perfected orbital docking techniques. A notable example is the Gemini 8 mission in 1966, where astronauts Neil Armstrong and David Scott successfully docked their spacecraft with an Agena target vehicle, marking the first docking of two spacecraft in orbit. In terms of cost, there is no doubt that commercial vehicles take a big advantage. NASA currently spends over a couple of billion dollars annually on development costs for the Orion spacecraft and the Space Launch System, with estimates placing a single SLS Block 1B rocket production cost at around $2.5 billion, not including integration costs. 
an independent assessment by the Planetary Society, indicated that NASA has spent a total of $23.7 billion on the development of the Orion spacecraft, which is designed to take up to four astronauts into deep space for 21 days. Not to mention, the Orion spacecraft has been facing serious heat shield issues after its return in Artemis 1. $23.7 billion is a lot of money compared to the $1.7 billion invested in the proven Crew Dragon. Also, the cost per launch on Falcon Heavy and Falcon 9 is only a small fraction of $4 billion per launch of the expendable Orange rocket. However, NASA has its own opinion when rejecting SpaceX's idea of using commercial vehicles. It comes from the inherent design and functionality of Dragon, which is specifically designed for low Earth orbit, and to get it to the moon, it would require a lot of modifications. NASA Administrator Bridenstine said, I'm not saying you couldn't modify it, but if you modified it, it would look a lot like Orion. Crew Dragon lacks sufficient delta-v to enter and leave lunar orbit independently. This necessitates an additional stage or vehicle capable of providing the required propulsion for lunar insertion and return. For a mission lasting several days, enhancements to life support systems and radiation shielding to ensure crew safety would be necessary to ensure astronaut safety and comfort during transit. This includes considerations for consumables and waste management. Beyond that, a lunar return involves much higher speeds, approximately 11 kilometers per second, Mach 36, which leads to significantly greater heating during re-entry, requiring robust heat shield capabilities. Such high speed generates more extreme temperatures and stress for the Pika-X heat shield used on Crew Dragon, which is optimized for low Earth orbit re-entry, where the spacecraft returns at speeds of around 7.8 km per second, Mach 25. SpaceX could modify it, but as of now it has not been tested or rated for lunar re-entry conditions. Another consideration is the Falcon Heavy rocket, while powerful and capable of launching significant payloads, is currently not rated for human launches. This limitation stems from several factors related to safety certification and SpaceX's strategic decisions. Specifically, to be human-rated, a rocket must undergo rigorous testing and certification processes to ensure the safety of astronauts. This includes evaluating the design, materials, and systems used in the rocket, as well as establishing protocols for emergency situations. The Falcon Heavy's design, while based on the proven Falcon 9 architecture, has not yet been subjected to these extensive evaluations for human flight. The human rating process involves not only engineering assessments, but also extensive documentation that meets NASA and FAA standards. This paperwork ensures that every component of the rocket adheres to safety regulations designed to protect crew members during launch and flight. More importantly, SpaceX has prioritized the development of its Starship program over pursuing human rating for Falcon Heavy. The company has focused its resources on Starship as the primary vehicle for future crewed missions beyond low Earth orbit, which may reduce the incentive to invest in human rating Falcon Heavy at this time. So, how about you? What do you think about the idea of using SpaceX's duo of Crew Dragon and Falcon rockets to replace NASA's failed and troubled vehicles? Is it doable? Share your thoughts in the comments section below. If not, what is the solution at this point? Well, we can come up with the idea of using another commercial vehicle, ULA's Vulcan Centaur rocket, for instance. The ICPS, Interim Cryogenic Propulsion Stage is designed by ULA which simplifies integrating Orion with Vulcan, since ULA already knows Orion's interface requirements. Putting Orion on Vulcan avoids the need to develop and integrate Boeing's Starliner with Vulcan, saving time and effort. Anyway, although there is a high possibility that Crew Dragon would not be used for the lunar mission, at least we have a modified, single-use version of its Dragon 2 spacecraft, called Dragon XL, part of NASA's Gateway Logistics Services program. 
This vehicle will feature increased propellant storage, expanded cargo space, and other design changes. It will be launched on the company's Falcon Heavy rocket to deliver several tons of cargo to Gateway and remove trash. Or instead of focusing on Dragon, SpaceX is focusing on Starship, which is designed for lunar and deep space missions and will use a different heat shield technology tailored for high-speed re-entry. Starship's heat shield tiles are generally understood to be made from ceramic matrix composite materials, similar to TUFROC, toughened unipiece, fibrous reinforced oxidation resistant composite. SpaceX is also exploring metallic shielding, potentially supplemented by yolage gas or liquid film cooling. The concept of the metallic tiles was first suggested by Elon Musk in late 2018. It was a kind of ultra-reusable heat shield for Starship. Build it out of steel and use water, or liquid methane, to wick re-entry heat away. You just need, essentially, a stainless steel sandwich. You flow either fuel or water in between the sandwich layer, and then you have very tiny perforations on the outside and you essentially bleed water, or fuel, through them to cool the windward side of the rocket. This design envisions a stainless steel sandwich structure with tiny perforations, allowing water or liquid methane to flow between the layers and bleed through to cool the windward side during re-entry. This approach offers several potential benefits, including streamlining heat shield requirements, and enabling the use of lightweight stainless steel balloon tanks while maintaining structural integrity. SpaceX is actively testing metallic tiles and active cooling methods to determine the best materials for protecting Starship during atmospheric re-entry. In terms of design and structure, Starship uses uniformly shaped hexagon tiles that are mechanically attached, bolted, or screwed on, allowing for faster replacement compared to the Space Shuttle tiles. The stainless steel hull of Starship allows for thinner tiles that don't need to be strong insulators because the steel can withstand much higher temperatures than aluminum. In addition to the Starship version mentioned, SpaceX is also developing an expendable version specifically for NASA's Artemis program, Starship HLS. In the third phase of its HLS procurement process, NASA awarded SpaceX a contract in April 2021 to develop, produce, and demonstrate Starship HLS. Specifically for lunar landings, Starship HLS will not need a heat shield for Earth re-entry, since it never returns to Earth. Instead, it is designed to remain in space and operate between lunar orbit and the Moon's surface. Nevertheless, the spacecraft's crew and cargo capacity is significant because it can carry many astronauts and large payloads to stay on the moon for long periods of time. During the mission, it requires multiple fuel transfers from tanker starships before heading to the moon. Also, it uses Raptor engines optimized for vacuum and moon landings, with landing legs for stability on rough terrain. That said, other starship variants intended for Earth return, such as the starship crew and cargo versions, will require a different heat shield technology compared to traditional spacecraft like Crew Dragon or Orion.